we have an opportunity to get a better grasp on how changes in climate and a regional climate system might be contributing to water loss. Water levels are in a period of sustained lows, particularly on Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. They hit record lows in December of 2012 and in January in 2013. Right now, we're in a period where even if we have above average precipitation and snow melt this spring, which we're very likely to have, we might only then begin to start creeping back towards that long-term average water level. The shipping industry right now is under some stress. When water levels are extremely low, that limits their ability to carry extra cargo. That affects all of us. We all rely on the goods and services provided by that industry. And certainly, we also think about things like beaches, recreational activities as water levels get extremely low. It really is an invisible driver, and for that reason, it's so important to monitor and quantify it. Right now, there's a lot of ice on the lakes. Ice gets a lot of attention because people can see it. They can stand on it. It's something that they notice. But, you know, evaporation is something that is almost this invisible drain on the Great Lakes. We're seeing two things that typically are connected with evaporation changes. One is significant cover of ice over the lakes, but more importantly, extremely cold temperatures. When the water is extremely cold, it's not really going to evaporate that much whether there's ice there or not. And the important thing is that that cold water can carry over all the way through the summer, meaning it won't warm it up as much as it normally would, into the following fall. If next fall water temperatures are cooler than they have been in the past, we're likely to see lower than average evaporation rates. And what that means is that water levels won't decline as much in the fall. And if that happens over time, it could substantially allow water levels to begin rising year after year again. Certainly, we expect that might be what happens next fall. So when we talk about the Great Lakes, we are literally talking about massive, massive surface areas, the largest freshwater surfaces on the planet. We would need a, a huge number of measurements in order to understand exactly what's happening over all points of the lake. And unfortunately, there are very few land-based stations out there. There are, in fact, very few lands or islands on which to put a fixed station. It was just around 2007 and 2008 when a few pioneering researchers had the foresight to go and put eddy covariance towers, these structures that are designed to measure variables related to evaporation, on old lighthouses. That type of technology represents a stepping stone to the future of understanding the water budget of the Great Lakes and why water levels are likely to change. We're trying as a regional team to put some of those cutting edge sensors on things like buoys that we can distribute more broadly around the Great Lakes and on vessels. Some of the large boats that crisscross across the lakes are a great source of information and we'd like to use those boats to improve our understanding about evaporation. There are really very few other places on the, on the planet that have such a large freshwater system and the capability of understanding why that freshwater system might be changing. Couple the suppression of fire with the recent um, droughts that we've been hearing so much about in the western United States, you essentially have a lot of fuel that, um, that can catch and create these massive uh, blazes that we've been seeing.